probably the most famous studio in Nashville possibly RCA Studio B RCA Records established a recording studio in this building in November 1957 with the local offices run by guitarist producer Chet Atkins its success led to a larger studio known as Studio A built next door in 1964 Studio B recorded numerous hits by Elvis, the Everleys, Roy Orbison, Don Gibson, Charlie Pride, Jim Reeves, Dolly Parton and many others. Along with Bradley Studios, Studio B is known for developing the Nashville sound. So of course when it opened in 57 it was just the RCA studio because there wasn't a and B at the time. Um, so this, uh, this studio was built after the studio that RCA were using on McGavick Street. Uh, was no longer fit for purpose that the, they were sharing with the Methodist Film, TV and Radio Commission and this one was purpose built and Chad Atkins was tasked with actually building it designing it and so this was completed in November 1957 so the first time Elvis recorded here was in June 10th 1958 like I said, the studio had been open seven or eight months at the time and Elvis was home on leave from from his army stint um, and this would be the only time that he officially recorded while he was in the army, June 10th, 1958, an all-night session where he produced five songs, um, all, all of them all of them pretty classic songs really, I Need Your Love Tonight, that was that was a double-sided UK number one with another track recorded here that night. Now and then there's a fool such as I. Um, in America, they, the B-sides charted. Uh, both sides were single, quite often charted separately, uh, due, just due to the popularity of the artist and the songs themselves. And a fool such as I was a number two hit, and I Need Your Love Tonight was number four. He also recorded uh, Ain't I Loving You Baby, which for some reason I think it's a good track but it wasn't actually recorded till 19, uh, wasn't actually released until 1964 by that time the Beatles had um, more or less taken the pop world by storm and maybe that uh, song Ain't I Loving You Babies may have seemed a bit a bit dated at the time but still such was Elvis's popularity that it still was a top 20 hit in uh, the UK and the US he also recorded I Got Stung that night Again, that was a number one double-sided hit in the UK with uh, One Night, which was recorded a year before in uh, in uh, 1957. And, of course, the other song that was recorded here was one of my favourites, Big Hunk of Love, which was a number one US, number four UK hit in 1959. So Elvis was here before heading back to Fort Hood for his advanced tank training four days later well three days later actually because the, the last song of the five was uh, in the early hours of the 11th of June Yes, the Methodist Hospital looks a lot different now uh, to how it used to look back in the 50s. So, here's a picture of, of it now and uh, how it used to look in 58. So, following Gladys' death on August 14th, 1958, here at the Methodist Hospital has changed a lot since that time. Much more modern uh, structure and facilities now. Uh, but Gladys was brought here a couple of days earlier. She was uh, in Texas, of course, with Elvis uh, in uh, Killeen in Texas there. She fell ill and uh, she was more comfortable with the Memphis physician, so um, she came home. Uh, and then, unfortunately, on the 14th of August, she passed away. Elvis, the body was taken to Graceland briefly, but then Colonel Parker persuaded Elvis 
a funeral at Graceland would be turned into a bit of a media circus. And so he was convinced to have this funeral service back up here on Union at the Memphis uh, at the Memphis Funeral Service, which is what he did. And the Memphis Funeral Home was right across the road there, where that building now stands. Despite his own well-documented grief at the loss of his mother, Elvis was back at the funeral home the very next day as his friend Red West's father had also died and it was his funeral service the day after Gladys's and Elvis, although devastated, attended that to support his best friend Red West at the time. Between the stop stop at Forest Hill Cemetery again, although of course Elvis and his mother are no longer buried here because this was Gladys's original burial site. This is where the statue that now stands in the Meditation Garden in Graceland once stood. Which the funeral was held in the Memphis, Memphis Funeral Home up on Union. Funeral procession came down Highway 51 there from Upper Union and Bellevue. Came down Bellevue which is Highway 51 came south into the cemetery here and this is where she was originally buried. Uh, of course Elvis, uh, after a bit of compassion leave, returned, uh, returned to the army. He was due to ship out for Germany the very next month. Uh, when Elvis was interred in the mausoleum just over there, when he, di uh, when he died, Gladys's remains were also placed in the mausoleum, the family tomb in the mausoleum. But when somebody had tried to break into the Presley tomb, and Vernon received special permission to have the body, have Elvis's body removed to Graceland, Gladys's body was moved at the same time. 